nice. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the stream here. Um, we're going to keep working into this spaceship uh, for a little bit uh, today, maybe an hour or so, then we'll get a, a render out and uh, jump across into Photoshop and start kind of like making up a little uh, concept painting with this in there. Um, I've got a little bit of an idea of what I want to do with the final painting, um, which is going to require me to just build a couple of legs that this thing can land on, because um, I want to have it on the ground uh, in this shot that I'm thinking of. So we'll do that with we'll a little bit more panel detailing into it. Um, we might go through and clean up some of this trashy geometry in here that's just kind of making stuff look a bit weird, but we'll see how we go because it's not really something that's super noticeable from a normal distance away, so we might just leave it for now. But uh, play that by ear. But yeah, we'll just go through, get this finished up as quickly as possible, and uh, yeah, end up in Photoshop hopefully today doing some some final kind of like painting work and comping work and corrections and stuff like that. Um, Ray's here again, moderating the stream, and she's probably going to pop up every now and then just to ask any questions uh, that she can think of looking at the work. But of course, if you guys have any questions about anything that is going on, um, feel free to jump into the chat on whatever platform you're watching on and ask away and I'll do my best to answer them. So, all right, let's just jump in here and start blocking out some little legs, I guess. We'll keep them pretty simple. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Just gonna get a different environment back here. So yeah, with this, uh, at the moment, um, because I've actually got like kind of a final image in mind, it actually makes a little bit of this final detailing easier um, than it sometimes can be. I think it's really important when you get uh, up to this stage of any design and you've got like a, a good idea of where you need to go with it um, to kind of just focus on the things that really are going to get you the result that you need. Um, so in this particular case, because we're kind of doing a uh, painting, uh, 
we can kind of afford to uh, basically um, sorry someone just randomly walked into the room I was in and distracted me um, yeah we can afford to like leave some areas you know not super detailed and the ones that are really going to show up in the painting and be important um, we can just make sure we focus on that so that's what the, the real focus of today is going to be is really just um, getting those those last few little details in um, so that we're kind of ready to start painting essentially This, this leg design is pretty basic. Just, you know, so again, something that's going to read okay in silhouette when this thing's kind of perched on the ground. Um, not going to really take it to any real crazy level of complexity. So there's weird little chicken leg looking things. Um, one thing we might just do here is cut out a little bit of a hatch for them to disappear into, which we can probably do by just slicing this main shape here like that. And then once we're kind of ready, oh, we might actually have to do it here. Let's just fly up all down there. Nice. So what that'll do is delete that one, and we can mirror that across. What that's actually going to do is, even though the geometry is a little bit wacky just select everything in here oh. select all these things we can invert that and delete everything else and then what that is going to do is give us this nice little panel that sits there and then we can select the outside of that and just offset that edge
that for that, and then we can just pre-select all of this. And just punch that in there like that, which should give us a decent little panel shape to just sit in there, which we can then rotate out like that to make a little slot for the legs to go into. Um, obviously there's nothing in there at the moment. We can just kind of like put them up there like that to make it look like they are doing what they're meant to do. for the front one. Oops. 
Just put a few little detail cuts into this just to make it a little bit more interesting. as well which makes them just catch the light a little bit better like that. It's all right. So yeah, I just want to make these um, little spheres that can go in the into the recesses here of the gun turret so just make give it a little bit of interest How long have I been using Blender? Um, 
That's a good question. Uh, it's been a little while now, probably a couple of years, I would say. I think that sounds about right. Um, so I guess like it's relatively new uh, in terms of my workflow, but um, it's something that I'm kind of getting more comfortable with every day and like figuring out what uh, yeah, you know what you can do with it and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really just ever since it kind of like Blender got really popular oops, um, really quickly, like almost overnight, it seems. Um, and you know, because they really started to push the development of it for uh, you know, kind of like contemporary use and like mainstream use. It used to be this like weird ugly duckling I guess in a sense it was this strange little program that not a huge amount of people used um, and I, I knew about it but I didn't really use it and then all of a sudden for whatever reason I'm sure it was a good one they started really kind of pushing development um, further and further which was which was really good um, And it just became this this program that, especially for concept work, it's just so fast for building things and and like visualizing stuff really really well. Um, so that, that's really where that you know I, I, I picked it up and yeah probably like after a, I don't know it didn't take a huge amount of time to learn either. It was kind of it's relatively painless. Um, and there are so many like. Uh, resources online for learning Blender that is just kind of it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's just it's a great great tool for any concept artist to have, really. smash these in here really really dodgily here and this like this is a pretty wacky lighting setup but just allows me to kind of quickly scroll around and kind of see how my details are working
think we need to probably not So that's still kind of busted, but as long as we get the line there, that's all we really need. So, we are getting to a point with this one where I think, for the purposes of what I want to do with it, we're pretty good. So, I'm just going to delete these weird lights and what I'm going to do is just duplicate this back here and just run a smart apply from this through hard ops and that will run and apply all of my modifiers, all of my booleans except for the bevel modifiers which means I can still adjust the bevel on each of these shapes um, which is what is actually causing most of these weird little issues here but like I said we might just live with some of these but we can go in and, and fix these quite easily it's just a matter of merging vertices that are in weird spots basically Once I've fixed one side of it, I can just. I'm creating some angons here, but it doesn't really matter for this.
No, we can just fix by sliding. So you can just see that that's a case of that getting too close to all of these vertices in here. I'll just slide that along there and yeah, this shading is not necessarily going to be perfect, but it'll fix most of that stuff. So we'll just do more of the really bad bits in here. I'm just making these meshes, meshes symmetrical once I've fixed one side. Um, that's all the really, oh, there's a little bit around here. Cool. All right. So I'll have like I've got this one here, which is kind of my my edit editable one, and then I've got this one here, which is kind of all flattened down and ready to go. And huh, I lost my wings. Interesting. That's fine. Um, paint that back in later. So yeah, we've got these two versions now. That, and I'm just gonna install extra little add-in here, add-on rather. Which I thought I already had installed, but obviously not. I do. It is already installed. Oh, okay. Oops. Um, cool. Okay. So what I've just installed here, let's just delete that for now, is the, well, I've turned it on, the machine tools grouping tool. Um, which is actually this, this great little tool that basically lets you parent things um, to a single group uh, empty here. You can do this in Blender without it, but um, this just makes everything way more simple. And it'll just give you this group in here and you can move all of these objects around, scale them, rotate them, always attached to this one cube in here which is really cool so Although what it has not done Not sure where that's not centered in the object, but anyway, for now that's 
totally fine. But I think what we'll actually do to get started here with building this up into a little scene is we're just going to open up another version or another instance of Blender here and we'll start in a new file and what we'll actually do is we'll grab all of that and we'll copy those objects into this scene here. So you can just use Control C and Control V like normal uh, you know, normal Photoshop or Word or whatever you might be using. Um, and we've just copy pasted those across to another one. So my idea here for this little shot was to basically have um, a bunch of little, uh, let's actually jump into Photoshop here. I'll just draw something up. So, oh, yeah. So, they have like, I don't know, some little. We've got this little robot guy. Um, and yeah, the idea was to maybe have it the uh, the ship. Kind of like parked. on this little asteroid and then the robot because these asteroids are like so tiny have like the robot kind of like standing here but obviously like you know as you get further around this asteroid the gravity changes really quickly so you can just like walk all the way around it um, and they kind of have this as like a little establishing shot to this little, I guess, like mining or like whatever he's been sent out to mine, just like a, you know, like asteroid kind of crazy asteroid belt kind of going off into the distance like that, you know, with some galaxies and nebulas and stuff like that. And he's got his little lunchbox or something. Um, you know, maybe another one right in the foreground here. A bit of depth. So, yeah, it's cool. Space clouds through here, and maybe some, like, you know, busted up ships or something floating through here. So, it's like a real crazy debris asteroid field. So, that was kind of the idea. That's a terrible sketch, but that's pretty much the idea for that. So what we'll do is we'll kind of uh, go into this new blender scene and <clears throat> we will make a few rocks. There's a very quick way to do that in Blender. Um, and then we'll apply some light to it and kind of go from there. I don't have the robot, so the robot's going to be something I'll do in Photoshop. Um, but everything else we've got here to just be able to build this up relatively quickly, which should be cool. So rocks. Um, there's a bunch of ways that you can get rocks in 3D. You can grab them off the internet. You can make your own if you really want to. Um, Blender's got this little plugin called the ANT Landscape Generator, which allows you to make landscapes and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, but it also, oh, ah, that's right. It also has uh, the ability to make rocks. And one thing I've just realized is the button that I need to press to get the landscape option tools up is the same as the It's the 
the same as the button to bring up the hard ops menu, which we don't want. So let me try that again. So if you turn on this ant landscape plugin, you get this uh, landscape option at the bottom of the mesh thing. Um, and then if you press the, the tool options or the repeat last key in Blender, which basically brings up the toolbar to let you tweak the options of the last thing you did, um, that's kind of how this landscape generator works as you bring up this and you can come into presets and you've got all these different presets of stuff so you can make all these weird you know kind of landscape things and some of them are kind of crappy but you know if you muck around with the options you can get some cool stuff um, but I am just looking for rock at the moment so we're just gonna make a bunch of rocks if we come into here these are going to be exactly the same but if we come in here and change oh, I'm going to muck around with this and get some interesting stuff actually that's kind of fun maybe useful maybe not find out That's cool. It's like a tiny little planet. And the other thing you can do here is if you just uh, change the random seed, it'll just regenerate another thing based on the one you just did. So I actually really like those circular ones, they're kind of cool. Just make a few of them. We can definitely repeat some of these. It's not going to be an issue if we've got a couple of the same ones in the scene, but considering we have the ability to just make random new ones, we might as well. Like that. Ooh. And then, of course, the idea being that we're going to place one of these underneath our. Uh, robot uh, robot spaceship rub like that and just rotate that slightly in space and we'll just set up a camera now this new camera and we'll actually leave this as a relatively long lens because I want to give this kind of like a cool space look. Long lens often helps with that. And the rest of these, I'm just going to lock this camera as well because then if I move out of it, it doesn't move the camera with it, which we do not want. jump back to our camera by just hitting zero on the number pad. Actually, I think like this, these circular ones are kind of A little bit of that. Change my viewplane clipping here so that I can see everything. And we'll come into the camera and change the clipping on that as well. Sometimes when you make scenes in Blender, you might notice that if you place things too far away from the camera, they actually disappear like this. 
um, that's just because this clipping end is set too close. So if you just set that to like 10,000 or something like that, um, that means that everything will be visible. Let's put a sunlight in this scene so when we render it we get something like this. And at the moment we've got zero atmosphere in here. Um, so I'm going to put a tiny bit of environment color in here, even though space technically doesn't have any. You know, we can fuck around with all sorts of like whatever lighting scenario we want. Lighting, Be kind of fun. And we're going to apply some simple texture to these uh, rocks as well. And we'll put in a little bit of a fog in here again as well, just to <laughs> simulate a bit of atmosphere. So we'll do that by just putting a big, oops, big cube around everything. And in the shading tab here, on this cube, we'll just make a new material and we'll call it fog. Delete principled material on that. Put a volume scatter material in here instead. Um, and we'll set that to like 001, something really, really small. And that just gives us a bit of kind of distance fog. as well. And then we can get access to that if we just search for fog up here in the search bar on the top right. Come down to volume and we can muck around with the, the density as much as we want. something like that. Um, I'm gonna render this probably in cycles I think but just got it in Eevee at the moment but let's just turn up our shadow resolution as much as we can just to give that a decent kind of chance of showing us something interesting <clears throat> and what we'll do with the rocks here or the asteroids here is I just pre-prepared a couple of um, hand painted textures which I will open up here in a second cool and these are actually from something else um, I've been working on they're really simple just kind of hand painted textures in Photoshop but um, you can use these to kind of create some really interesting um, effects on, on simple geometry so we're going to use a couple of them so let's just Call this, make a new material, call it asteroid. Let's bring in, we'll bring this building one in, even though it's kind of the wrong color. Yeah, and control T to make a texture coordinates set up here. We're gonna set this to generated and box mapping. Let me 
just... Oh, that's right. Sometimes if you have this fog cube set up like I do here, you'll find that you accidentally select this cube all the time, um, which is annoying. And what you can do, actually just rename this to fog so we know which one it is. Um, you can just uncheck this little selection chevron here in the outliner. Um, if you can't see it, you can come up here to the top right and select whichever of these you want. Um, you know, that's the red. This is the selection visibility, viewport visibility, and render visibility. Um, you can turn all those on, and then you have control over all of your objects. So if we turn off the selection one, there it means we can no longer select the fog cube, which is totally fine. We can still see it, but we just can't select it. So that means that we can more easily come around to here. work with our asteroids. So you can see now that these asteroids have got kind of this nice hand-painted texture on it. Um, we can just set the blend up. These are technically meant to tile but they are not on these uh, spheres because spheres don't tile particularly well. Set the roughness up pretty high and we're going to put a bump map in here. We're going to use the color of the same texture. As the bump map as well, which will then just take, you know, the, the light and dark areas of that texture and use them to create a bump map. Um, we don't want too much craziness going on in there, but just a little bit is nice. And we might bring in this grass texture here, which looks like not like that, but anyway, it looks like this. Um, and we'll use that as a roughness map in non-color mode. So that will give us some nice variation in roughness. Select box. And we don't want too much shininess on this asteroid. So we'll just put a color ramp between the roughness and the shader node. So we can just muck around with exactly how rough we get this. But these little variations in like reflection and stuff can really make stuff look kind of snazzy. You can see here at the moment we're not getting a huge amount of uh, fill light in there. I'm just going to check what we see in cycles. But we want to get a little bit more in there as well. Also, just going to add in this is where kind of like lighting gets a little bit kind of cheaty. Um, this won't show up in the EV render, but it should in the cycles render give us a little bit of bounce light coming back up off the bottom here. Which is just going to make that look a little bit more interesting. You could also put in like an area light or something like that if you wanted to um, kind of really push the push the effect. Um, that is happening because I have the fog cube is set to not select, but it is still set as visible um, And that can screw around with your snapping sometimes Just something to be aware of yeah, So we can put like a Cool little fill light in there or something like that. That's way too bright, but Just gives us a little bit more interest at the end of the day
nice. We crashed the video driver. Means we will have to render an EV for now until we have a chance to fix that. Which is going to require a restart of Blender. No big deal. I'm just going to tweak the color of the spaceship a little bit. Sunlight is currently white, which is kind of boring. Bog down a little bit. Always add a little bit more in later in Photoshop. It's pretty simple. Yeah, you can kind of see how it's pretty simple to kind of set up a scene like this. I'm just going to save this. Just have to restart Blender to render that because the graphics driver did crash, which happens occasionally. This won't take too long, it shouldn't do. Just got this rendering on the other screen here. It's not particularly interesting to look at, but there you go.
yeah, so I mean, while that renders, this, like, I think, like, really is kind of a good demonstration of why, why Blender is so handy, is it allows you to kind of, you know, build scenes like this. If you've got an image in your head, um, it allows you to build scenes out this, like this pretty quickly, um, or at least something that's, you know, fairly workable quite quickly. Um, plus, you get all the flexibility of being able to, um, you know, move cameras around, move compositional elements around and tweak things really quickly that normally might require you to repaint something or you know redraw something or even like shifting things around in 2d which is not you know ideal um but you know the, the render speed that you get from it and especially from eevee if you're working um with an aesthetic or with a style that kind of suits eevee really well um you can actually yeah, get get images out really quickly so it's a, it's a cool thing and like I said before pretty easy to learn as well um, as far as 3d programs go you know they're pretty complicated but there is so much good uh, tutorial material out there on the web on YouTube like that's how I learned it I was just going online and following a few tutorials and then whenever I come up against something that doesn't seem to be working um, just jump back online and, and find you know Google your issue and find the solution for it or find a solution for it um, save our renders out here and we're just going to do a so that one's saved so that's all good um, just going to do a couple of other renders so we can do a workbench render which is going to be going to turn off our fog for that um, this workbench render will just let us get a clown pass out which is super handy because it allows us to have all of these selections so it's this is basically an instant render there it is basically gives us something that we can have in Photoshop to just easily select layers and all that kind of stuff this then is a clown pass um, the other one we might just do here which I no, actually we won't necessarily do that because I should have done that when I did my cycles around that I don't want to make you guys have to wait around for another render in that that I should have pulled out direct and indirects but anyway that's all right that will be okay probably won't need it for this one anyway but, uh, yeah so that's that so that kind of makes us you know we're kind of done with blender uh, for this image we can kind of jump into Photoshop and let's open up those two renders we just did and I go. I don't even know where I saved those. I thought I put them somewhere. Oh. Okay. I did put them there. That's weird. Nope. Okay. Now they're showing up. Bizarre. Um, so the color and the clowns, let's open both of these. So there are those, we don't need that anymore. Copy him into there. And that's good, excellent. Um, yeah, and now we can actually kind of start just working into this like a regular painting. But the first thing we do is just get all of our separations. So 
we do have a little bit of a unfortunate similarity in color between this part of the spaceship and this part of the spaceship but in the grand scheme of things having to cut this out manually is not that big of a deal. So I basically just will duplicate these off the background layer so we now have something like that. Obviously we can't get everything behind the spaceship, but it's a nice bug. So this is still fiddly, but it is way quicker than sitting around and trying to do all of this manually. Um, and if you set your tolerance down further, I probably should have done that earlier actually, but if you set your tolerance down, it means that when you do have colors like this green here and this yellow, which are very similar, um, the magic wand tool won't, as often anyway, uh, pick those out. interior ones we can just do by hand and yeah, just if you spend the you know the five ten maybe 20 minutes at the start doing all this stuff it makes your life way easier later on Cool, so we just grab that and duplicate that off the background as well. And this one go in the foreground. So now, excluding the background, we've got three layers, which should be enough for now. Always make more. Um, and yeah, we can start to, to paint. I'm going to get rid of the background background layer that just so we don't have to see it because they'll be doubling up and start painting so really a lot of this is obviously the, the robots gonna have to come into it, but a lot of this is going to be kind of just doing kind of atmospheric tweaks and stuff like that. I want to add a bit of a little bit of bloom to this. And we're gonna, yeah, we can draw in a, you know, a little bit more detail on the ship as well in places where we might need it. Oh, I think my spheres didn't come through properly. I didn't check that. That was silly. Oh, well. Okay. 
excuse me while I experiment slightly with brushes because these are all Simon's brushes so I don't know where stuff is just need to find one that works well for what I want to do here so you want to have our little robot guy um, but just be kind of standing brush that brush is no good um, kind of like standing here I need to go and grab the Alex's design sheet for this guy because I've forgotten exactly what he looks like, but just for now. Classic kind of hands on hips or something like that, um, which I think would work. All right. If we give him like his little, like I said, his little lunch box. Something else that I just I like to do at this stage is kind of like just plan out all the elements that are going to go into the image to, to finish it off. So if there's any you know, other asteroids and stuff like that, now is the time to block them in. Just going to be lumps at this stage. And we'll also just kind of like put in a little bit of painterly stuff here too, because it's not that it, you know, if, if, a, if an image is 3D, there's, there's nothing wrong with it looking like it was made in 3D, but you might also want to, and I think in this particular case, we want to make this look a little bit more painterly, and there's there's definitely things that we can do with paint that in 3D would look, you know, that you wouldn't be able to do in 3D, but as artistic choices, they're kind of <laughs> nice. You know. Bits of color variation and stuff like that that are. And then of course we have we can really kind of like tweak the the shapes and the, the edge control to our liking.
let me see if I can just track down my reference for that robot. So that's going to be kind of useful. Nice. All right, I've got it on my on my phone, which is not ideal, but it'll do. So let's see if we can come in here and just draw him in. A little bit lower res here than I thought I was. Tapping my phone here so my reference doesn't go away. Even like just really makes it a bit more obvious, kind of what the, the gag, oops, the gag here is in terms of him being gravity being kind of wacky.
So warp like that is a really nice thing to just kind of like adjusting silhouettes, but you do have to be really careful that you don't kind of kill the 3D form. Threw myself off there with the, the slantiness. his basic colors in as well. So it's actually a separate piece from the original design, so we'll keep that idea going.
have locked in a few other little background elements as well just to keep kind of the overall build up of the piece kind of consistent. I don't want to get too focused on any one piece for too long like the the basic block in it where that character is going is, is there now so we can kind of relax a little bit on that. Just think of a few kind of like nebula things kind of working through here. I wanted but maybe some, some wool. Okay, that's a bit nuts, but let's go with it. A little bit of like focal point on here. This might be a little bit too crazy, but one of these asteroids kind of like Cracking apart this weird alien energy source.
just going to break up the, especially in the foreground here, just bring, bring a little bit more kind of painterliness into some of this because the geometry out of Blender looks a little bit crap. shadowed areas as well. A few more ledges here and there that can just catch a bit of light. Now a lot of this sometimes with, with working over 3D renders really comes down to just kind of like you're not often even adding too much extra to the render, it's just about controlling the, the finish. Um, so it you know, often feels a little bit less like painting and more like editing, but it's kind of, I guess, the, the difference between working traditionally and working with you know 3D and Photoshop and kind of digital modern tools is that you're often just trying to bend the tools to do what you want whereas with if you're you know painting with oils or something like that you get a lot of the reaction of the medium and the paint with the canvas and all this kind of stuff where with digital painting you kind of you have to force that a little bit so like whether it's using you know different brushes or you know what what have you um, you're really kind of like forcing the, the software to do what you want as opposed to letting like enjoying all the natural variation of the medium sometimes so so this is really as much about just like finding the right edges to soften and places to add a little bit of extra detail as it is kind of you know painting So just going to add a few little um, extra kind of panel details to the ship as well, just accentuating the ones that are already there as well sometimes because they might be a little bit softer than we wanted. The, uh, the buoy in here for our landing gear, so we'll just paint that back in. We still have the hatch, but we lost the actual recess in the hull. My fault for not checking that.
just tweak the shape of that tail a little bit as well, make the touch more interesting. And some kind of engine. Just yeah, really, just accentuating what's already there in a lot of cases. Um, not to over push things or anything like that, or over paint stuff either. It's it's often a trap that I've, I've fallen into in the past with three D stuff where you try and over edit, over edit stuff. Um, whereas I find now a little bit more comfortable with letting some of the 3D sit there and then if you make a couple of relatively small changes you can really kind of affect the actual final finish of the uh, the painting without actually having to like really overpaint everything because that's from a, from a workflow point of view the reason we're using 3D is to kind of you know speed things up to give us the, the higher fidelity quicker so if we sit here for days and days painting into this, then we're kind of losing that as an advantage. Adding a few more little edge highlights here and there on areas where I would have liked there to be a bit more of a bevel, I guess, in the in the model. Just helps push the form a little bit further.
And the other thing that, especially with this kind of style, I find is if you're pushing kind of like a, you know, like a fairly simplistic, stylized kind of look, um, one of the things that 3D, it's not that 3D is not good at it, it just takes a lot of work in the modeling stage, is like making the little imperfections and wonkiness and all that kind of stuff. Um, which is actually like really easy to add in later in Photoshop. So it's uh, oops. something you don't want to miss out, but again, kind of like, I find it really useful to have more of an idea of where my image is headed when I'm working in 3D than I might perhaps in 2D where I might be a little bit more inclined to kind of jump in and see what happens with something. You don't want to go in completely blind. You still want to have a decent concept and, you know, kind of build in your head. But with 3D, um, I think it really helps to have a little bit more of an idea of the finish. But all these little things that I'm going in here and doing now are just details that I know for a fact that I can definitely paint faster than I can model all this really little fiddly stuff. And that's just a, just a question of efficiency.
Look at the time. I did not even realize we were that close to four. That's crazy. But we are almost done for this week. So really it's like next week all I want to do is come back and just kind of keep painting into this. Get it finished up. Um, and yeah, like and then kind of hopefully have a a nice interesting finished piece um you know or at least almost done uh for the for the kind of the eight hours that we've put into it you know it's kind of like a day's work um i have to do something with these legs these legs i don't this far leg is still not in the right spot that's let's just get rid of that but um, yeah Got to just kind of get the base lighting direction kind of blocked in on our guy here so we can kind of pop in the right spot I still think we need to probably maybe just move him around a touch we are going to get rid of that so he kind of sits behind over the over the edge of the uh, asteroid a little bit not by too much but just a touch but yeah we need to need to sort out that that leg Something wrong with the legs. We'll figure it out next week. That's all right. But um, yeah. Hopefully this is kind of a been an interesting little journey for you guys to watch this process. How I kind of you know build things up in design things up in 3D and bring them across into kind of final paintings. And yeah, we can probably put yeah an extra couple of hours into this next week, and then that's my kind of stint done. Um. But yeah, should be able to finish this up and we'll post it somewhere so you guys can look at it and probably can throw the 3D file and the PSD up somewhere as well if people are interested in seeing that. So uh, yeah, until next week guys, uh, I'll see you then.